This is Science Quest. With your host, Jed Allen Friel. Taking you around the world, discussing everything science. Jed Allen Fields, and thanks for joining us for another episode aboard the Lake Guardian on Science Quest. I'm with Dr. Tim Holan from the University of Loyola, and he's going to tell you what a rosette is and what we were doing with it. Dr. Tim? Uh, this is a sample that allows us to take water at, at any depth in the lake. So we uh, winch it up here and drop it off over the side. There's a number of sensors for rosette outside and then we can see where we've been collecting water samples from the bottom to the thermocline and up on the surface but the real thing is what do we do with those samples once we've got them collected well that's where we're going to go visit with Dr. Tim Holine who right now is in the chemistry lab so let's go on to the chemistry lab Dr. Holine how are we Good, how are you? Jessica, how are we doing? Hi, good. good. So this is Jessica and Dr. Tim Holine from the University of Loyola Chicago. Dr. Tim Holine is a specialist in microplastics, the stuff that's in your shower gel, the stuff that might be in your body wash, and you don't even think about it twice once it leaves. But I'm going to let Dr. Tim tell you a little bit more about microplastics and what we're doing today. Dr. Tim? Sure. So microplastic comes from a couple different places. Uh, there is plastic in our soaps, and when you wash, uh, in the shower, it goes into the drain, into the wastewater treatment plant, and some of it gets stuck in there, but some of it goes back out into the environment. Also, uh, plastic clothing, so polyester or acrylic clothes, when you wash them, there's plastic in the effluent, and that goes back also to the wastewater treatment plant. And then there's plastic out there in the environment, bottles, bags, these break apart into smaller pieces, and then we have small jagged fragments. And I gotta tell you, the aha moment for me working in the lab with Dr. Tim Holine has been the whole washing machine thing. Yeah. I've always understood the microplastic bead feel good, you know, and those things that happen, but now we're taking a look at all of a sudden you throw your clothes in the washer, your mom's washing them, little bitty pieces are breaking off, and they're ending up somewhere in our water systems. I see Quinn's just come in with some new water samples from the rosette that we looked at. Quinn, thanks for bringing those in. Those Very are going to well. get analyzed. Jessica's going to start pouring those through the filtering system so we can get rid of the water and get down to what we hope will look like the plastic beads where Michelle's been working on them under the microscope. Doc, can you tell us about what we're doing? Sure. For our uh, samples we get from the nets and from the bottom of the lake, we're uh, sieving them. So we, we get different size uh, fractions of the stuff from the nets. We, uh, we take this stuff and it has uh, organic material, sand, rocks, and some bits of plastic. And what we need to do is separate all that. So we want to isolate the plastic. And we do that by um, first adding it to a beaker with some heat and um, some, uh, some chemicals and peroxide that, that really uh, boil and break up the organic stuff so we can hopefully get rid of all the dirt and organic material in there. Then we add uh, uh, some salt to create a very dense solution. We put it in a funnel to get rid of all the sand and all the inorganic stuff. And the plastic is going to be floating on top. So once that's floating on top, we can get it into a filter. And then on the filter, we look at it under the microplastic. So it's just a process of getting rid of all the stuff we don't want to count and isolating the plastic by itself so we can, so we can count it. So tell me this. We're running samples. How many samples are we running on each particular level of collection? Yeah, so we, at each site, we take three separate water samples, three samples with the net, and then three samples of the sediment at the bottom. So triangulating our data all on the way. We want to take one data set, because it might not be a very accurate reading of what we're doing at that point. Yeah, for anything, for plastic, for uh, plankton, for fish, you have to take multiple replicate samples because uh, the environment is just variable. Some samples are high, some are low, so you got to take a bunch so you have an average. So we'll take that average, then we're going to record our data. Now, what's the filter look like when we take it out? If you got an example for us, we can show the kids. I know we've been putting them under foil. But let's take a look at one and see what we look like before it goes under the microscope. So this is one of our net samples from the other day. So this is after we've digested everything that we can. It's a dirty looking one. We've digested as much as we can. We've gotten rid of the sand and we've um, isolated the, the stuff that's floating in our salt solution. 
So there's other kinds of detritus in here. There's bits of plant matter. There's bits of um, zooplankton or little animals that might be left over. And what we have to do is look at this under the microscope to really distinguish a plastic item from a, a more naturally occurring item. So even though we filtered it out, there's a lot of things natural in nature that are going to still be left in our sample. Right. So now we've got to take a look at it and scientifically decide whether it was man-made. Is it a plastic? Or is it something that nature just put there and we're taking a look at it exactly. all of And when you do that, the, the plastic, in most cases, really jumps out at you. It's, it's a different color. It's red, it's blue, or green. And it's a uniform kind of shape. Whereas the natural stuff uh, looks like bits of broken plants or broken insects. So Dr. Holman, let me ask you a question. I know you're, a lot of your work has been on the rivers yeah. around Lake Michigan, and this is our first time really doing a lot of research out on the Lake Guardian. Yeah. But are we finding plastic in the environment? Yes, yeah, we're finding some. So there is no doubt that the plastic that we use in our everyday life, that once we use it, we forget about it, is showing up in the environment. Obviously those levels are what we're out here trying to find yeah. out. Yeah. What we want to know is how much is here and what kinds of plastic are here so that we can figure out where it's coming from and what the most important um, decisions we can make about trying to prevent it. Great. i tell you what, Michelle's been working over at the microscopes, so let's go take a look with Michelle and see what we found at the microscopes also. Hey Michelle, I see you're working on one of those filters. Tell me about what you're doing. Well, we're taking a look at those filters under the microscope, taking a look to count actually how many microplastics that we did find in our sample of water at Lake Michigan. We're recording the fragments, the pellets, the foam, the film, and the fibers that we actually find on these samples. Hey, Dr. Tim, why don't you come on over and take a look at what I found under here? So you think you found something? I did. We have been finding a lot of fibers Go ahead and, take a look and a little bit of uh, fragments. So when we're looking under the filters, uh, looking under the microscope at the filters, we're looking to separate the plastic material from the other remnants of whatever organic stuff is left. And you can see there's other brown bits of, of either little insects or, or plants, and the plastic itself typically really kind of is obvious. When you look at a, a thread like this, this is a plastic thread. We look for the color, of course, but we also look along the edges to see if it's pretty uniform in its shape and, um, and even. So this, this fiber isn't ripped along the edges. It's very, uh, it has very clearly defined margins. If you get a really good look at it, sometimes you can see the, the fiber is reflective. So it's a shiny surface. Um, again, that's not typical for natural kinds of fibers. So, so this, to us, has been through a digestion process, any organic stuff was going to be um, uh, burned away. The uh, the remnants are uh, the, the plastic. That's what it is. So there you have it. Dr. Holling, thanks so much for letting us ride along on the Guardian and do some research this week. We're in the lab, and there you have it. Next time you're taking a shower, next time your mom's washing your clothes, I want you to remember what you saw today. Just because it's gone doesn't mean it's really gone. Hey, Dr. Holland, thanks so much for joining us today on Science Quest. And remember, sometimes the answers to your scientific questions may be in a laboratory, aboard a vessel like the Lake Guardian, and you might find the answer looking through a microscope. I'm Jed Allen Friels, and thanks for joining us today on Science Quest. With your host, Jed Allen Friel. He's taking you around the world, discussing everything.